So now I'm going to show you my first example of where I might be in a situation, in a live setting, in a rave, where I've either felt that the energy that I've been putting out there at this point has gone on for long enough and everyone is ready for a bit of a switch up, or I might use this tactic if I've started off on a certain vibe and have quickly picked up that the crowd aren't feeling it in the way I feel that they should be and I have a good idea of what they would rather be hearing. So essentially this is resetting the set that you're in the middle of, being able to reset it and switch up the vibe. I've got two examples to show you. This is the first one. Okay, so now I'm gonna talk you through 
a way in which you can reset the vibe mid-set and switch to a different kind of energy, which you may want to do for a number of reasons. So reason number one could be because everything's been going great, but you've sort of exhausted the sound that you've been playing for a while, the energy, the vibe, you've kind of exhausted that and you've picked up on the fact that people might be ready for a bit of a switch up and a bit of change in energy. Another reason might be because you can tell what you've been doing up to this point might not be exactly the one for this particular crowd. So you know where you wanna go, you know you have an idea of what you think is gonna go down better, but you need to find a way to get there without it being really abrupt um, and random. So there are a couple of ways that you can do this. So this is the first way that I'm gonna show you. So track number one here is Eyes on the Prize by DJ Hazard. Track number two is Shy FX Balaclava, the Skeptical Remix. So I'm just going to skip through this to the point where they drop together. Okay, so at this point, I have double dropped track number one and two, Eyes on the Prize and Balaclava. So they're mixing nicely in sync together. At this point, I already know what my plan is. And this Again, something I've touched on before is where knowing the tracks and the structure of the tracks you're playing before you play them. So I know that quite soon in Balaclava, there's gonna be a sort of vocal breakdown. And that's where I've decided I'm gonna switch the energy. So first of all, I'm gonna reduce it down so it's just Balaclava in the mix. So there's a little edit there where the beat cuts out, which is a perfect place to pull one of the tracks out and it, then it continues on its own. So you can see I've pulled track number one out and I've actually, I'm just gonna pause that there. So when I pulled that out, I had already pushed off track number three before that happened. So that was in the mix. I got it in time, but what I did, I set a loop which I'd pre-prepared, which is something you can also do live, which is something I do also do on the fly. But this particular track, which is track number three at the moment, that's Valley of the Shadows by Origin Unknown, the Chase and Status remix. So the beginning of that track is very recognizable. Um, it's it's quite stripped back. It has a really nice musical sound to it. So I have a pre-prepared loop in that track for the reason that it, it's a bit of a get out of jail card in many situations and because it's already there, I don't always use it. It's something I can just trigger without having to do too much. So it all happens very quickly with this. I've already pressed that, pressed play on that and I've brought it in so you can hear that that track is kind of playing over the top of that balaclava at this point, but it's not playing in its organic form where it's leading up to the drop. The beginning of it is just looping around at the moment. And that is because it's going to give me enough time to prepare deck one and replace the track that was in there with the new track, which is a Fink Tonk remix of Randy Valentine, No Hype Attached. So that's track number one. I know I want to double drop that with Valley of the Shadows, which is the one that's looping. So in order to just make sure everything's ready because it happens in such a short amount of time, I've got that on loop and I know it's already in time in the mix. So I'm not gonna have to touch that again other than to just turn the loop off at the right point. So I also know that I've got about a phrase left of Balaclava before I need to or before the opportunity comes for that to be taken out in a subtle way, which is when it breaks down. So I'm just gonna show you exactly where that happens. Okay, so you can hear now Balaclava, it's just vocals. And at that point, because I've had enough time to set up deck number one with a new track, press play, get it in time, I have already managed to get that in time and turn track number one up so that when I do take track number two out, there is something that's full enough to replace it without feeling like there's been a void through taking that track out, which in its nature is quite an upfront track. It's got a full vocal on it. It's got quite a heavy bass line. So there's always a risk that by 
doing a switch like this and removing quite a prominent sound in the mix, it might, suddenly things might drop down or there might be a void left open. So, so a way to avoid that is to have two tracks ready to have at the same time in taking that one out. So I basically, by using loops, by using cue points, given myself enough time to replace and switch vibes without it sounding like there's something missing. It's being replaced by a new energy, but because that energy is quite prevalent in itself, it automatically captures you without you wondering what happened. So you can hear, so now track number three and track number one, this is a new blend compared to what was happening a minute ago. Initially, there were two tracks, one and two, in the blend. Now, within a short space of time, there's two different tracks in the blend together. So I'm keeping the box full at all times. And you can hear they're gonna build up together and they're in sync. I've taken the loop off on track number three now because I know how many phrases that is till the drop. And I've matched it to how many phrases there is in track number one till the drop. Because this is stuff I already know. So you can hear they're gonna build up together. And the drop on track number one and three is so full that it doesn't make you think, it doesn't make you miss what was happening or like it's stepped down. It's just, it's changed to a jungle vibe. Like the vibe on the first mix and the second mix here are completely different. But if you can maneuver it in the right way, it doesn't leave any gaps. It kind of, it makes sense and it, fulfills the crowd in a new way so that they're just moving with you. There's no kind of wondering like, oh, what happened to what we were just listening to or anything like that. Um, and that really is, I found the best way to kind of go from one vibe to the other.